Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very fascinating, interesting clinical concepts the localization of visual field defects and other characteristics. So if you have visual field defects, how do you localize? So the localization of visual field defects and other characteristics. The optic nerve, the visual fields, but what exactly is a visual field? The visual field is the limit of the peripheral vision, the area in which an object can be seen while the eye remains fixed. So the visual field is the limit of the peripheral vision, the area in which an object can be seen while the eye remains fixed. So this is visual field. So what are all the visual field abnormalities? For the neurological purposes, visual field abnormalities can be divided into scotomas, hemianopias or altitudinal defects. So, for the neurological purposes, visual field abnormalities can be divided into scotomas, hemianopias or altitudinal defects. Disorders of the afferent visual system can be divided into prechiasmal or at the level of chiasm that is chiasmal or at the back of the chiasm known as the retrochiasmal. So, it can be divided into prechiasmal lesions, chiasmal lesions and retrochiasmal lesions. The optic nerve, the visual field defects. So, what are all the various types of the defect? Central scotoma, the loss of central vision. You find this it in optic neuritis, macular degeneration. Arcuate scotoma, it is an arcuate shaped loss of vision known as arcuate scotoma. You find this especially in glaucoma because the arcuate fibers tend to get affected. So, you can see in other conditions also like anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, glaucoma, branch retinal artery or vein occlusion. Then we have altitudinal defects, either the superior part or the inferior part. So, altitudinal field defect we see in anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, retinal artery branch occlusion or optic neuritis. Centrosketal, centrosecal scotoma. That means not only the central part, it extends parallelly also. So this is known as centrosecal scotoma, hereditary. You find it in optic neuritis, toxic nutritional optic neuropathy. Then there is a generalized constriction. Generalized constriction. You see this in papilledema and retinitis pigmentosa. So these are all the interesting visual field defects. Central scotoma, arcuate scotoma, altitudinal field defect centrosecal scotoma and generalized constriction. Optic chiasm. So, these occur at the pre-chiasmal level. So, at the chiasmal level, what is the manifestation? Since the crossing nasal fibers get affected, there will be loss of temporal field. So, you get bitemporal hemianopia. Since the crossing nasal fibers get affected, nasal fibers represent temporal field. So, we get bitemporal hemianopia. We see it in optic chiasm, compression by pituitary adenoma or tumor or meningioma. Now, let us go to the retrochiasmal pathway. So, we had the pre-chiasmal pathways where we have uh, different kinds of scotomas like central scotoma, arcuate scotoma, altitudinal field defect, secocentral uh, scotomas and generalized constriction of the visual field. Then we have at the level of optic chiasma, bitemporal hemianopia. Now, when we come backwards to the chiasma, we call it as a retrochiasmal pathway. So, the optic radiations get affected. We get right homonymous hemianopia. So, lesion of the left optic tract, lateral genital body, optic radiations or visual cortex. If the inferior, that is the temporal fibers get affected, we get superior quadrantonopia. If the parietal fibers get affected, we get inferior quadrantonopia. So, superior right quadrantonopia known as pi in the sky. It is seen in the lesions of optic radiations in the temporal lobe. If parietal fibers get affected, we get inferior quadrantonopia. And finally, when occipital cortex gets affected, the 
uh, there's complete visual uh, loss but then the macula is represented in the occipital pole so it gets spared macula represents the central vision so we can get a visual loss with macular sparing so that indicates an occipital lobe lesion right so prechiasmal chiasmal and retrochiasmal lesions so prechiasmal lesions they cause monoocular visual loss because only one side the eye gets affected there is impaired color perception there is central paracentral or secocentral visual field defects there is afferent pupillary defect the disc may or may not appear abnormal depending on the exact location of the lesion so if it is retro if it is retro bulbar it may not affect the optic fundus so what are the manifestations of the precasmal lesions monoocular visual loss only one side the same side there is visual loss impaired color perception central para or paracentral or secocentral visual field defects afferent pupillary defects and the disc may or may not appear abnormal depending on the exact location of the lesion this is about precasmal lesion in chiasmal lesions they cause heterogeneous field defects that is bitemporal hemianopias heterogeneous different sides are involved most often bitemporal hemianopia with preservation of visual acuity and color perception and a normal appearing disc the disc does not get affected because the lesion is in the optic chiasm retrochiasmal lesions what they cause they cause a contralateral homonymous hemianopia and have no effect on acuity or disc appearance there is usually no effect on color vision but some central lesions may cause achromatopsia so these are all the manifestations of precasmal chiasmal and retrochiasmal lesions so when we summarize all the manifestations how do we localize visual field defects the localization of visual field defects and other characteristics this is a wonderful table by which we can localize all kinds of visual field defects so when macula gets affected what happens when the optic nerve gets affected what happens that is in papilla retrobulbar neuropathy or distal optic nerve near chiasm chiasm optic tract lateral geniculate body and finally the optic radiations that is the temporal lobe parietal lobe and calocrine cortex now let's go step by step first we'll talk about the macula if the macula gets affected macula remember it is responsible for the highest visual acuity and therefore when the macula gets affected there is a decrease of visual acuity macula is also responsible for color vision so there is a decrease in color vision so the other characteristics are the visual field defects there is ipsilateral central scotoma pupillary function possibly mild afferent pupillary defect but the disc appears normal because it is only the macula which gets affected so when the macula gets affected the visual acuity is decreased a lot color vision is also decreased there is ipsilateral central scotoma possibly mild afferent pupillary defect but disc appears normal this is about macula if optic nerve gets affected what are all the manifestations if the papilla gets affected what we call it as papillopathy again the visual acuity decreases but there's a marked impairment of color vision again there is ipsilateral central paracentral or secocentral scotoma there is afferent pupillary defect and since the papilla gets affected there could be disc edema so when there is papillopathy there is a decrease in visual acuity very much decrease in color vision there is ipsilateral central paracentral or secocentral scotoma afferent pupillary defect and since the papilla gets affected there is disc edema when we comes just slightly backwards to the papilla what we call as a retrobulbar neuropathy again the visual acuity is decreased color vision is decreased again there could be central paracentral or secocentral scotomas afferent pupillary defect may be there but here the disc is normal because it is slightly backwards it is slightly the retro portion retro portion that is the backward portion of the optic nerve which gets affected since the optic nerve had spared the disc appearance is normal very very important point then when we come to the distal optic nerve that is the near chiasm again visual acuity is decreased color vision is decreased 
but then we get junctional scotoma because of willy will brand's knee the nasal fibers come and then cross over to the opposite side and then start descending so because of this fibers the nasal fibers coming then ascending and then going to the opposite side we get junctional scotoma wherein uh, there is a scotoma on one eye and then the opposite half is affected in the other eye. This is known as junctional scotoma because of Will Brandt's knee being affected. There could be afferent pupillary defect and again disc appearance is normal. When it comes to chiasm, visual acuity is normal, color vision is normal. But since the nasal fibers get affected, the nasal fibers represent the temporal field. They get characteristic bitemporal hemianopia. The pupillary function is normal and they get bow tie atrophy or band atrophy because the nasal fibers are affected the nasal fibers are represented horizontally the temporal fibers are represented vertically in the optic fundus since the nasal fibers get affected they get bow tie atrophy or band atrophy when we come to the optic tract the visual acuity is normal the color vision is normal there is contralateral incongruous homonymous hemianopia as we go backwards to the occipital cortex, the incongruity becomes more of congruous nature. So the more the anterior, the more the incongruity. So in the optic tract, we have the highest incongruity. So contralateral incongruous homonymous hemianopia. That means they are not equally affected because they are jumbled up. The fibers are jumbled up. And there may be mild afferent pupillary defect in the contralateral eye. The disc appearance is normal. Mild afferent pupillary defect because the pupillary fibers also cross over. In fact, a bulk of pupillary fibers come in the optic tract. And it is present in the contralateral eye because they cross over to the opposite side. Lateral geniculate body, visual acuity is normal, color vision is normal. Again, there is contralateral incongruous homonymous heniopia. Pupillary function is normal, disc appearance is normal. Yes. Then when we come to the optic radiations that is beyond lateral geniculate body, if the temporal fibers get affected, visual acuity is normal, color vision is normal, but contralateral superior quadrantonopia. Since temporal fibers represent superior vision, so they will have contralateral superior quadrantonopia. Pupillary function is normal, disc appearance is normal. When the parietal lobe is affected, visual acuity is normal, color vision is normal, but this time parietal is affected, that is the superior fibers are affected, so they represent inferior vision, so they will have contralateral inferior quadrantonopia. Pupillary function is normal, disc appearance is normal. When we come to the calocrine cortex, visual acuity is normal, color vision is normal. Now, the more posterior, the more congruity. So, now that we get contralateral homonymous hemianopia, but it is congruous. So, contralateral congruous homonymous hemianopia and the macula is in the posterior pole. It is in the pole of the occipital cortex and therefore, usually macula is not affected. Since macula is not affected, the central vision is spared, what we call as macular sparing. So, in the calocrine cortex, there is contralateral congruous homonymous hemianopia, but with macular sparing, the pupillary function is normal and the disc appearance is normal. So, the pearls in the localization of visual field defects and other characteristics, the pearls or the key points are the ones I have made a table out of it. I have encircled with a dark line. So, these are all the important key points or pearls. So, summarizing the important points, the important uh, points put it in the dark colored circles. In macula, the visual acuity is affected, the color vision is affected. Optic nerve papillopathy, visual acuity is affected, color vision is affected, but the disc appearance is edematous because the papilla per se is affected. In retrobulbar neuropathy, the disc is normal because it is placed posterior to the papilla. In the distal optic now near optic chiasma, because the will branch knee is affected, there will be junctional scotoma. In chiasma, since the nasal fibers get affected, they will have bitemporal hemianopia, they have bow tie atrophy or band atrophy because the nasal fibers are placed horizontally. In optic atrophy, there will be contralateral homonymous hemianopia, but it is incongruous. The more posterior, the more congruity. And they may have mild afferent pupillary defect in the contralateral eye. In the lateral geniculate body, again contralateral incongruous homonymous hemianopia. Optic radiations, when the temporal fibers get affected, contralateral superior quadrantonopia, 
when the parietal fibers get affected contralateral inferior quadrant tone up here when calectrine cortex gets affected now it becomes more congruous because it is the posterior part and therefore contralateral congruous homonymous hemian up here but usually the macula is paired because mass macula is in the posterior most part and therefore it is paired so they get contralateral congruous homonymous hemian up here with macula sparing so these are the fascinating concepts of localization of visual field defects and other characteristics yeah these are all the important concepts of localization of visual field defects. The other important neurology concepts I put in a question answer format in a book called Focus Neurology written by me. It is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. If interested, it could be bought online. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture on localization of visual field defects as much as I have enjoyed delivering it. If you have enjoyed it, please like it, share it. But do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts and my page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.